All right, now we are going to talk about the four different logical relationships we can have in a network diagram and draw some pictures for them. So we have finished a start. This is what we've been doing up until now. We have start to start, finish to finish, and start to finish. So first of all, let's start off with what we already know. Finish to start relationships look something like this. Imagine if you had a Gantt chart. Uh, uh, your Gantt chart would look something like this, right? We're gonna drag these guys up. Maybe if you only had two activities, you're familiar with something that looks like this, right? We would have activity A and we would have activity B. And this would be duration going along that side. So you can imagine there would be this little arrow here that connects the finish of this guy, comes down and goes to the start of this guy. Well, something else we could do is we learned in the last video about lag. So we could also have something that looks like this. Uh, we could have A and then we could have a little bit of a gap. So let's go, instead of putting this right here, we're going to shift it over to the right a little bit, and then when you go and draw on your little arrow here, uh, you have some duration here. So, for example, this would just be a regular finish to start relationship, and this guy here might say this was two days or something. We're just making that number up. This would be a finish to start two FS2 relationship. So, this guy, we'd have activity A, we'd have activity B. And activity B can't start until two days after activity A has finished, right? From the finish to the start, there has to be two days. Whereas here, from the finish to the start, there's no restriction. It can just start. B can just start uh, right after A is done. Uh, now, if we were looking at this, there's a few different ways that we could draw this in a Gantt chart. So I might have just said these are Gantt charts. But if I did, I meant that they were PDM network diagrams. I'm pretty sure I said Gantt chart. Anyways, what we can do for a regular finish to start relationship, as we've been doing in previous examples, you can just draw an arrow, and that just gives you enough information to know that activity B can start once activity A is done. You can also, if you really want, you can technically write an FS above the line, although it's pretty redundant because just an arrow with nothing above it means it's a finish to start relationship. But if you did have, for example, a lag of two between these activities, then in that case, you would have to write FS2. So, what I would normally be in the habit of doing is if it's just a finish to start relationship, don't write anything. But if there is a finish to start relationship with lag, then write FS and whatever the lag is. In this case, activity A would finish, and then you would have to wait for two days before B can start. So the next one that we'll talk about is the start to start relationship. All this means is that the second activity is able to start once the first activity has started. It's a little odd, but uh, the Gantt chart representation would look something like this. We would have our first activity here. And then wherever the first activity starts, whoops, uh, we want to, what's going on here? Um, there we go. All right. Once the first activity starts, the second activity can start. So if we go in here and we'll label this activity A and activity B, well, activity B can start as long as A has started. So if you wanted to think about the arrow to connect these, if that helps you, once this A, the point that A starts at is also the point where B can start at. Uh, if there was lag in this case, we would get something that looks more like this. We would have activity A, and say we have again maybe a lag of two days. Well, then B could start two days after A has started. So let's draw this in. All right, so we'd have activity A, we'd have activity B, and then from this point, our, our logic or the relationship here would just be like that. So we would have, in this case, this would be a start-start relationship, and in this case, this would maybe be a start start two or whatever this lag is that we're seeing. All right, so let's draw the three different ways that we can represent the PDM network diagram over here. So the three different connecting arrows that you might see depending on who's drawing your PDM network diagram. Uh, the first one would look like this. You would come off the start of the first activity and the arrow would lead on over to the start of your next activity, right? This would be A depends on, or B depends on A and it's a start start relationship, right? B can start once the start, once A starts. The other way you can do it is someone would just draw just a regular straight arrow like we were doing before, but they would specify that this isn't a regular finish to start relationship. They would say this is a start to start. So they would just write start start SS over top of the arrow. Uh, this would be super important when you're doing your forward pass, backward pass, all that stuff. Uh, and if there was lag, uh, then generally what someone would do is they would write S, S, and then put the number of days and lag. So in this case, uh, let's say there's two days of lag. Uh, so you would have A going to B and the start start two. So activity B could start two days after activity A has started. The next one let's talk about would be finish to finish relationships. So a finish to finish relationship, if we're just talking about activities A and B, 
then if B depends on A, that means that B can finish when A finishes. Again, it's uh, it doesn't it's not as intuitive as a finish to start, but let's draw what the what a Gantt chart representation would look like. Uh, so if we had our activity A here, and then maybe we had something else, uh, we had activity B. Let's make it a little bit shorter, just because we can. Doesn't really matter. So we'd have activity A and activity B, and all we're saying is that. B, the start date of B isn't so important, it's the end date. Uh, they both, B can start wherever it wants as long as it, it finishes when A finishes. That's the restriction here. So our little connecting arrow would just look just like that. So if we have lag between two activities like this with a finish to finish relationship, then we would draw our first activity here, activity A, and say again, let's use uh, two days of lag. Then we would have some other activity maybe like that. Uh, we're not specifying the durations of the activity here, but we're saying that this is in fact activity A, and this is B. And then if we had a finish to finish two relationship, then this guy, activity B, could finish two days after activity A. So here at the top guy, this would just be a regular finish to finish relationship. This guy down here, we would call this a finish to finish two, or you know, whatever. We're, we don't actually have the, the lines on here, but we're just using two as an example for this video. Uh, the PDM network diagram notation that you might see, uh, depending on who's drawing it, would look like this. Where one of the first options, someone would literally draw the line from the end of activity A, and they might draw and connect it all the way over to the end of activity B. Uh, I just try to stay away from these ones, and same with the first one here. I prefer just to write it right above a straight line saying what this is. So we would say this is a finish finish, right? If it was just a straight line by itself, that would be finish to start. But if we just specify that this is a finish to finish, you'll be able to calculate your early or your early start and early finish and all that and your, your forward and backward passes. Uh, or if there was a lag, then you would connect these with a line. You would just literally say which relationship it is and how much lag does it have. So let's say an example could be finish finish two, right? In this case, again, activity B would be allowed to finish two days after activity A. And that's the restriction on it. And then depending on the duration of B, then you'd be able to figure out what the, what the earliest start is and so on. Now, the last one that we're going to talk about is the start to finish relationship. This one's totally weird and it seems a little less practical or realistic than the rest, but let's go ahead and we'll just jump right to an example with some lag. So let's say it's a start to finish three. So that means that, uh, here, let's draw this first. Uh, just two completely arbitrary activities here. Let's just label them and then we'll talk about this. Okay, so what we're saying is that activity B, if it was a start to finish three, that activity B can finish three days after activity A starts. So we would connect, if we wanted to do the Gantt chart approach, we would connect this line here uh, and that's what our relationship is. But really what we're looking at is this kind of point in time, which we would have the days on the, the x-axis of our Gantt chart. Uh, and this point in time, all right, so this first line is the start of A, this line is the end of B, and the, the difference between this would be three days. So a little weird, but you know, it can happen, and I might throw one of these on the future videos just for practice, uh, but if we wanted to look at the, the PDM network diagram representation of this or the notation, uh, here's the three options that we can have where depending on who's drawing it, some people might literally go draw the arrow from the start to the finish, you know, from the preceding to the succeeding activity. Uh, again, but I would prefer to just draw a straight line, or a crooked line, yeah, maybe it's, oops, let's redo that. Uh, we'll draw our straight line, and then we'll just say what type of relationship it is. If there's no lag, we can just write start to finish, and if there is some lag, for example, let's say three days, uh, we could write start to finish three. All right, now the next four videos we're going to do is I will just do a more comprehensive example uh, where we'll have in the next video finish to start and then with the video after that start starts, finish finish and start finish, uh, just so you can actually work through these and see a little bit of what's actually going on with these different predecessor relationships.